Okay, so now for the fun part is to answer this question. What is going to be the impact of this crisis on unemployment? Now, we have a pretty good sense, uh, just reading the news, that the unemployment rate is obviously going to increase uh, probably quite a bit as a result of this. So just, just to give you a sense, uh, before we get into the details of the model, in Wisconsin, the unemployment rate in Wisconsin, before this all started, was right around 3.4%. So if we kind of go back, this is a good chance to review the stuff that we've learned so far. We have around 3 million people that are employed or unemployed in Wisconsin. So the size of our labor force, I shouldn't say this is employment here, uh, our labor force in Wisconsin is about 3 million people. So we have roughly a little bit 5 0.2 million, I think, 5.3 or 4 million people in Wisconsin. Um, so about 3 million in the labor force. And so the total number of unemployed people as of uh, the beginning of March was about 101,000 people. So you make that work out, that's about 3.4% unemployment rate. Uh, so in the first nine days of this crisis, before even the Safer at Home um, edict by Governor uh, Evers, there was an increase in unemployment claims, unemployment insurance benefit claims, which we'll get to. Of 100,000 and maybe a little bit more in nine days. Right, so just immediately at the very beginning of this crisis, we've effectively doubled the number of people that are unemployed. So now, as a result of this, just nothing else happens. The unemployment rate is already somewhere around 6.3%, I think. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that with the extra 100,000 people. So we've, we've about doubled unemployment in nine days, and that's only going to continue to increase. So what in the world explains that increase in unemployment? Well, our model set up well to, to help us understand that. So uh, what are the effects of this uh, COVID-19 uh, disaster here? Uh, so I think there's a couple things that are going to happen. So one we know in terms of labor demand the marginal product of labor is obviously going to go way down. Now why is that? Well workers haven't become less productive. So if I worked at a restaurant before I'm not any less productive than I was uh, prior to this. Um, but what's happened is that demand for goods and services has gone way down. Remember, that's one of the things that shifts the labor demand curve. Demand decreases, labor demand is going to uh, go down. And so the labor demand curve is going to shift to the left quite a bit. So you can't quite see it. Labor demand curve is going to shift to the left. Now, in terms of labor supply, Another impact is that you could think of in some sense uh, that labor supply may decrease in the sense that people might be sick or may be unwilling to participate in the labor market because they don't want to get sick. Uh, so perhaps I, I used to drive for Uber or I work for Shipt as a shopper. Uh, at the current wage, I may not be willing to supply my labor because I think it's going to increase my risk of catching this disease. Uh, so labor supply is also likely to decrease. at least a little bit. So this isn't gonna be larger than the decrease in demand, but we can expect to see some decrease in labor supply. People aren't quite willing it, uh, as willing as before to work uh, because they're worried about the risk of getting ill. So if we draw this out in our labor market diagrams, we've got labor on the horizontal axis, the wage on the vertical axis, and where was our economy before this all started? Call this labor supply one and labor demand one if I can draw this right. So one thing that was definitely true, the unemployment rate was 3.5%. So that's below the natural rate of unemployment. So that implies that pretty much anybody that wants to work or wanted to work was working. We're pretty much maxed out at the potential population here in our labor markets. We don't really have any structural unemployment, or we didn't 
uh, at this point, very little. So here's the equilibrium wage when we all started the equilibrium level of employment, W star one and L star one. Now, what's gonna happen as a result of this crisis is we're gonna have a big decrease in labor demand. Why? Well, firms don't want to hire as many workers because the workers aren't as productive because they can't they can't do anything. Nobody wants to buy anything. There's not much for the workers to do. So workers are less productive. Firms want to hire fewer of those workers. So there's a big decrease in labor demand. And we'll also have some small decrease in labor supply. So here's the labor supply two, labor demand two. In equilibrium, they should meet down here. Now, if that was true, there would be no change in unemployment, right? All it was was the result of the wage going down. We moved along the labor supply curve. At this point here, let's call that point A, anybody that wants to work is working. And so there was no change in the unemployment rate. It would stay uh, roughly around 3.5%, but labor force participation would go way down. Now, if we keep our downwardly rigid wage assumption, which is a pretty good one, our new equilibrium point is going to be where that wage meets the labor demand curve. And so we're going to see a very large decrease in employment as a result of this because of the decrease in labor demand and the downwardly rigid wage. So in terms of unemployment, if we compare the difference in labor supply and labor demand, the quantity of labor supply, quantity of labor demanded, we also are going to have a very large increase in unemployment. So we went from having really no extra unemployment to all of a sudden having a very large increase in the structural unemployment, or potentially what we call cyclical unemployment, as the unemployment rate is going to go well above uh, the natural rate. And so unemployment I'm sorry, it's not going to decrease. Uh, unemployment is going to increase. And so the unemployment rate is going to increase a lot. So I have no idea where it's going to go. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if in the next couple of weeks we learn the unemployment rate has is, is gone above 10%. Uh, and the only other time it's gone really significantly above 10%. Uh, there were two recessions, uh, one in the 80s and one most recently in 2007, 2009, where the unemployment rate got up to 10%. That was the worst in the Great Recession. The unemployment rate hit 10%. Uh, the last time it was higher than that, so if we get up into the 15% range, 20% range, that's getting closer to the period of time where we have the Great Recession. So depending on how big this shift in labor demand is, we could be talking about a labor market that we haven't seen since the 1930s in the Great Depression. And so this is really uncharted territory in our economy. And so it'll be interesting to see how all of this is going to play out. So that's a simple analysis of how this uh, pandemic is going to affect the U.S. labor market. As we expected, unemployment rates is going to increase. And now we have a really solid reason for what the factors are causing that increase in the unemployment rate. So what I'd like you to do is to, this, this question's a little bit longer, is to go back and look at the experience of our economy from 2007 until 2020, where the unemployment rate uh, hit its lowest point at about 3.4%. Uh, and we're gonna break it into two different chunks and try to understand using our model what could cause these different changes in, in the labor market? So give that question a try uh, and then come back on Canvas and I'll, I'll post a solution uh, to that exercise and you can see how well you did. So that's it for chapter nine. And uh, there will be a homework assignment associated with chapter nine. So go through the videos, do the questions on the learning objective. And as you go through those, you can have the homework going along with it. Uh, and hopefully you'll be well prepared to complete that homework.